everything in today's mystery box has been hunted and foraged in Australia for thousands of years. Many of those ingredients feature in this, Australia's first ever cookbook. Published 150 years ago. You won't believe what's in here. Recipes for wombat, mutton bird, kangaroo brains. The list goes on. You worried about what's under the box now? Yeah. Time to lift your lids. Now. Lift the box and there is a whole bunch of stuff that I sort of familiar with but not really familiar with. There's a couple of pieces of meat, um, which I think might be kangaroo. Hey. <laughs> any of you have any idea what's here? Finger limes. Finger limes, yep. Macadamia, Macadamia nuts. Is this lemon myrtle? Correct, lemon myrtle. Bush, Bush tomatoes. tomatoes. Warrigal oh. greens. Anyone know what these are? Quandons. And finally, the two meats. Super lean, good for you. Wallaby. Correct. And? Emu. Oh, wow. Emu. Yeah. I've never cooked with native Australian ingredients before. Emu. I'm scared of birds, so to eat one's kind of, yeah. Oh, we eat chicken. Maybe it tastes like chicken. So the rules. Very simple. You have 60 minutes to create a delicious dish from the ingredients that you found underneath the lids of your mystery box. You must use at least one of those ingredients, and don't forget, you've got a pantry of staples under your bench. They include butter, sugar, flour, milk, eggs, cream, and vinegar. What you need to know is that only the top three dishes are gonna be tasted. And then, of course, the winner gets a great advantage in Heston's invention test later on. Heston, you want to do the honours? OK, guys, ready? The time starts now. I'm excited about Heston being here. I'm, I'm really nervous about it, though. Um, he's, he's just amazing. Having Heston in the kitchen makes me feel inspired. It makes me want to match some flavours that seem a little bit different. Um, today I'm going to do a um, caramelised macadamia nut parfait. I'm going to do a little butter cake to go with it and a fruit and nut granola. Um, I hope I can make something that, that he'll like. Um, yeah, I'm a huge Heston fan. So it's pretty interesting to have him here and pretty excited as well. Really excited. I want to prove to the judges that I can do both savoury and sweet. Cooking some wallaby with some warrigal greens and some macadamia puree. If I can impress the judges, it'll be amazing, but I feel I can just impress Heston just a little bit more. Well, I don't think I've ever seen a bunch of contestants more excited than this lot when you walked in. That's fabulous. It's a pretty tough challenge. It's going to be really fascinating to see what they do. I'm looking at that going, Wallaby and emu is not something I normally cook with. And I'm thinking, what would I do? And I think straight away I'd go for a sweet option. Got that nice sourness as well. Condons have that yeah. sourness that tamarind has. Mm. And it was really great for kind of making the dish more, more moist and, and juicy. Macadamias for me, for such an Australian nut, I like them roasted. It's going to be an exciting cook. Can't wait to see what they're uh, up to. Shall we go and have a look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the most overwhelmed I've felt for a mystery box in this competition. I've never seen these ingredients. I don't know what they taste like. I've never used them. OK. I decided to cook the emu, but I have no idea how you're supposed to cook emu. I'm thinking the sous vide because this emu is so lean, and I think if I can chop up this lemon myrtle and put a lot of olive oil in there, kind of confit in this delicate heat, um, it'll just make it really tender, and then I can just finish it off in the pan. Hey, Hello. Sarah, how are you Good. doing? How are you? Good, thank you. Lovely to meet you. Oh. It was amazing. Um, I suppose you want to know what I'm cooking. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm thinking about um, confing the emu with the lemon myrtle in the sous vide and then finishing it off in the pan. 
and he kind of just stops and he's like... You've got to take it past a particular temperature quite okay. quickly. Otherwise, you can, you can start to tenderise the meat, but in a way that it can go slightly okay. happy. OK. So I'd, ha I'd, ha I'd have a thing. OK. <clears throat> All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Good, Good luck. luck. So I decided to cut a bit of the emu off and pan fry it and have a taste. And I noticed that it cooks very well, very quickly, because it's super lean. I'm going to cook it in the pan. I'm hoping the decision I've made is the right one because once I've decided, I've really just got to keep going with it. I'm looking at it and I'm trying to think of what the dish is. I've got a lot of little ideas and I'm trying to think about how that will actually all come together as a final piece. Um, so today I'm going to make a, a, a lemon myrtle bomalaska. I've made bomalaska before. I make bomalaska at home a little bit with my daughter Emily. So I'm sort of trying to be inspired by home uh, this week. A bomb Alaska is, a, is a, a frozen dessert on a little cake base with a meringue around the outside. I've got to make a parfait that needs to, to freeze and, and set in time. Normally I'd, I'd take a little bit longer than an hour to make a bomb Alaska at home, so there's some real risks there. But, you know, this is a mystery box. I've got to push myself. Uh, hopefully I can get this all done in time. Listen up, everybody. You've had 15 minutes. You've got 45 minutes to go. Come on, push. Let's go. We're making a wallaby with macadamia puree and warrigal greens. Hey, Reynolds. Hey, how are you? How are you? Good. Good. Very nice to meet you. Good to meet you. How are you, George? What dessert no, are you cooking? No, no, no. I'm cooking You're, wallaby. What? <laughs> You're not doing a dessert? No, not today. Cooking some wallaby with some warrigal greens. Okay. Do you want to have a look? Heston's checking my wallaby meat. Um, and just take a just take a little slice off the end. Let's see how it is. Let's see how it is. Okay, right. Thank you. I'm gonna slice the wallaby meat and just give it a test try. Yeah, it just seems a bit undercooked. Yeah. Put it into a tray and into the oven. There's a lot of pressure and I haven't made wallaby at all, ever. I've never cooked wallaby meat. So I'm just really hoping that it's cooked well. I've got a lot of elements going on, but I'm cooking in front of Heston. Um, you want to impress him, he's, he's amazing. So I decide I'll make a ricotta um, that I'll smoke to go on this dish. Heston being here and talking about history and invention, I decide to use ricotta because I grew up on a dairy farm and, and mum always made cheese from the milk that comes straight from the dairy. So that sort of fits in with this dish today because it's history for me and it's invention for me. Billy! Uh, Billy. Hi. So, Hi. <laughs> what are you doing? Today I'm doing a caramel macadamia nut parfait, a macadamia butter cake, a little granola sort of thing on the bottom with the other fondongs, smoked ricotta and a whey caramel. Oh. That's three, basically three desserts. Triangle of desserts. <clears throat> Anything I'd say, obviously, the more things you do, yeah. the more opportunities there are for things to go wrong. Yeah. Having Heston say that I might be doing too much for my dish today is, is pretty scary. Maybe I have taken on too much.